Next up, we have Tyree Wilson, who is just such a fun prospect to watch. I mean, when we're talking about disruption, you look in the dictionary, at least at the defensive end position in this draft class, and Tyree Wilson's picture is going to be right there. Just the the uh, epitome of disruptive and dominant out there on the edge, and maybe not in the most conventional of ways. Uh, he's a little bit of a longer guy. You know, there's some areas of his game where, you know, he might not be 100% polished yet, but... I'm a big Tyree Wilson fan, and you know I don't want to spoil the end of the video, but um, he might be my top player in the draft, right? One and two are neck and neck, and number one is in and out of a police station quite a bit, right? So Tyree Wilson, if I was a GM and I was sitting there and I was maybe you know Houston at two even, that's on the table to say the least. That is certainly on the table, and I think. You know, the national media is kind of starting to get wind of that. You know, you're starting to see him mock to Arizona at three. Or I haven't really seen Houston. You know, I'm a Lions fan, unfortunately, right? <laughs> you know, I'm sure you guys know and understand the suffering that entails. But Tyree Wilson's been a guy that for the last four months, I've been very excited to see on the board at six. And I don't think he's going to be there anymore. I hope he is, but um, I'm not really sure he is and why is that, right? What is, what makes him so special? Why is he so good? Well, first and foremost, it's the intangibles. It's the height, weight, speed combination. You know, um, didn't get to see him at the combine in the pro day because of a foot injury that he's still nursing and recovering from, but um, just an absolute freak, right? You see 6'6", 271, 35 and 5 eighths inch arms, um, which is just incredible. 23 reps on bench. He's 22 years old. He will be turning 23 in May. So, uh, you know, maybe a year older than you'd like out of a top pick. But I think we're really splitting hairs in that regard. As far as the stats, I don't think these do him justice. I'll be honest. And 61 total tackles is incredible. But I think people are going to see the seven sacks. And, you know, last video I was doing Isaiah Foskey and he had 10 and a half, right? And I think people will see that and think Tyree underwhelmed in some way. And... All I would say to that is just put on the film. Um, Cause <laughs> I mean, underwhelm is the absolute opposite of how you'll feel with his film. He had, I would say probably the second most fun film to watch of all the guys I've graded this year. So far the 106 and counting. Um, and the only guy I thought was more, was more enjoyable was the running back out of UCLA. Right. But uh, we'll cross that road when we get there. As far as the traits though, let's just hop right into it. Explosiveness and quickness. Uh, what more can you say? I wish he would have ran the 40 just to get a number, um, but you put on the film and, you know, it kind of speaks for itself, right? Um, absolutely one of the best athletes and his ability to convert that speed and quickness into power, I would say is unparalleled across the DNs in this draft. And you, know, you might be able to say, oh, but Lucas Van Ness is a power rusher. Uh, yeah, I get it, but doesn't have that level of burst that Tyree does, right? Uh, I gave him a 14 out of 15 as far as quickness and explosiveness is concerned, and that was far and away one of the highest grades I gave anyone in this draft, just because of the ways he can use it, you know? It's not just a, oh, look at me, 230-pound speed guy. No, it's a absolute wrecking ball who's going to throw you out of the way, chase you down from the backside, and absolutely... Uh, wreck your offense's game plan. And that's why, that's at least one of the reasons I think he is, uh, for me, one of the most interesting guys in the draft. I mean, just manhandling guys. Bull rushing guys right in their chest. Guys who have 30 to 50 pounds on them. Uh, you know, you'd like to see him, <laughs> you'd like to see him haul in the sack there. But yeah, whether it's a twist, whether it's a straight up rush, um, or whether it's uncontested off the edge, uh, Tyree is an absolute force to be reckoned with as far as the ability to set the edge and anchor. Um, this was interesting because I think he's very, very solid most of the time. There's kind of one game that I want to talk about and I'm going to have some plays on at the end where there was just some weird stuff going on. But by and large, does a good job keeping that outside arm free. Does, does a good job uh, making sure guys don't get outside of him. And even when they do on a play like that, he gets so much vertical penetration and he forces you to bubble so much that it helps other defenders rally, right? So even though, yeah, he does get beat around the edge, the yardage that you gain off the back of it isn't very high, right? And this is, you know, this is kind of a hint of the game that we're going to talk about later. 
uh, where there's a lot of negative reps along the edge, but you see that's certainly a positive, right? Because that's what I'm talking about. Keep the outside arm free, just penetrate up field, either force you back inside or bring you down outside, right? There's, there's very little room for gray area there as he is uh, just very impressive in that regard. Now, this was an interesting one. Tyrese flexibility and bend. Um, because when I was watching his film the very first time, I gave him an incredible grade here. And one of the reasons I like making these videos is because, well, I'm clipping plays as I'm watching film. And, you know, you come back a couple months later, a couple weeks later, and you realize, hey, I have 57 Tyree Wilson plays clipped. I don't know which ones I necessarily want to put in flexibility and bend. Right, like there weren't as many examples as it felt like there were. So that's actually a grade that that I did dock him on. As uh, yeah, I'll be honest. When I first graded him, he was my number one player, clear of Jalen Carter. Uh, that was one category where I docked him a little bit. Not saying it's bad. I still gave him a twelve five out of fifteen, but it's just something to consider. As far as the hand usage, uh, just violence, right? Uh, sometimes you wish maybe he rushed with a little bit more of a plan, right? If you want to nitpick. Uh, at times, the move can come maybe a little bit late, you know, as you kind of see there, right? You'd rather him not only jack the guy up, but then hit him with something quick rather than take a couple extra steps, right? That's the only real negative you can say there because I think his hand usage, by and large, uh, is very effective when he's throwing, right? When he's throwing his hands and when he's hitting you with a move, uh, he's hitting you with a move, right? And, and it's working. Um, so yeah, I gave him again, another very, very solid grade there. I think maybe he doesn't have the deepest bag of anybody in the draft ne necessarily. Um, I would say maybe that's a B BJ Ojuari out of LSU, but I think just the violence that he brings and part, you know, part and part due to the long arms and again, the, the speed to power, I think all of it kind of comes together and you just have a guy who can absolutely make guys look silly, right? And even on reps where he doesn't get a sack, right? Like that last one, he's commanding two guys and still throwing one guy off him, right? Just just very, uh, very impressive in that regard. And like I said, you know, earlier I was talking about the seven sacks. Maybe this is a reason why, because he's not trying to hit enough early moves. There are some reps like that, but uh, it kind of is what it is in that regard. Block deconstruction, again, this is where the long arms do their thing right? He, he has, when he has active hands, at least I'll say, again, um, you kind of wish maybe there's a little bit more urgency to shed, but when he, when he goes to shed, he gets off pretty much, right? Got to show a couple negative clips there. So there he is getting put on the ground. It is what it is. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think by and large, the ability to take those arms, stick them right into the chest of the opponent, bench press them off, and then ideally shed and make the tackle, right? Uh, that would kind of be the perfect picture like that, right? That's the perfect picture right there where you absolutely throw a guy to the ground. And of course, you know, none of these plays are totally perfect, but <laughs> I think you guys are getting where I'm coming from, right? Just as far as the, the block deconstruction, uh, he really has all you want as far as the strength's concerned, the length's concerned. Um, sometimes I think maybe the IQ for the ball isn't quite there. We'll touch on that in a minute, but yeah. Very solid player against the run when it comes to shedding. As far as the motor is concerned, again, um, hard worker. Very hard worker. Um, you know, I was kind of saying, like, oh, maybe you wish he was a little bit more active with his hands sometimes. That doesn't mean he's not active with his feet, right? That doesn't mean he's not active in pursuit. He's running as much as he can to the point that I actually gave him uh, the highest finishing and tackling grade of anybody in the draft. I know you've seen some missed tackles so far, but... Um, just the the ridiculousness of some of these where he's chasing guys down backside for losses of a yard two yards three yards he's bringing you down in space and you know it's very very frequent right like there's very few missed tackles and it's very rare that after first contact with tyree wilson you're picking up any extra yards um, so yeah, I gave him a, I gave him a 4.75 out of five there. I thought he was very impressive block rack. Now this is one that we have to talk about. So for some reason against this Baylor offense, Baylor decided they were going to run at him and it worked because on all these outside zone plays, for some reason he's stepping inside and I don't know what that is. I, I'm not sure what it was. We saw him setting the edge earlier, but if that's the Tyree Wilson, you're going to get, 
then I do think there are some concerns, right? Like that would be something that I would want to talk about in a meeting. Like what exactly was going on there? What reads were you getting, right? So as far as his block recognition grade, that's one of the the more average ones, but it's still generally good, I would say. It's just there was a series during that game and especially late in that game where it felt like rather than all these other teams running away from Tyree, kind of like you saw, you know, TCU was doing. Oh, we're going to leave him unblocked on the backside and run away from him, right? And just try and have Kendra Miller get out in space. Well, eh, not going to work. He's going to chase you down and bring you down. Baylor, they were just like, let's throw everything at him, right? The kitchen sink. We're going to motion towards him. We're going to, you know, bring guys across the front and, you know, do some jet sweeps and do some reverses at him. And they were trying to, like, almost... <laughs> almost take advantage of I, I don't really know how to I don't know how to put it into into words but it's almost like they're trying to like overload his senses right like hey this play you don't know if you're gonna get cracked on by that wide receiver you don't know if you're gonna get reached by the tight end you don't know if you're gonna get down blocked by that tackle you don't know if, like you have no idea what's gonna happen you don't know if you're gonna be the read guy you don't know if they're gonna leave you unblocked it's gonna be a veer play right like there's just a lot of stuff going on in that Baylor game. So maybe that is maybe that is a weakness, right? No one else seemed to exploit it on the year. And I watched uh, plenty of games. Uh, seven games here I evaluated. And, and uh, yeah, just very interesting as far as, you know, what that was all about. That was maybe the only real negative I saw. It's that if we're drafting you to be the best defensive end on this team for the next decade... You got to set the edge, right? Like that's, there's a reason that is the, one of the three most heavily weighted categories on my, in, in my grades, right? Um, so that was a little bit bizarre and something that I saw a little bit later in the process. Um, but regardless, as you see it there, um, the grade, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, right? For me, an 82.50 is a first rounder. And uh, in that regard, he has separated himself from the pack. Like I said, it's it's just him and Jalen Carter at the top. Um, I have Carter as a little bit higher raw grade, but I think D'Enzo is a slightly more valuable position. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. Carter comes out to a 90.22, Wilson to a 90.20. But then, like I said, if you want to if you want to incorporate the off the field concerns. Maybe Tyree is your number one pick. And I'm not saying there's not stuff to work on. There certainly is. But, I mean, you hook it like what Trevon Walker had to work on last year. And it's night and day. Right? Like, the level of impact and disruption that Tyree brings to the table compared to last year's number one pick or even the number two pick who people thought were more polished in Aiden Hutchinson, it's not even a discussion. It really isn't. Uh, I think last year I had Aiden graded around final grade around an 87, right? I mean, that's a big, that's a big jump right there. And he was one of my highest graded guys last year. So I just think that shows how much I like Tyree. It just felt like he was always in the backfield. He was always beating his offensive lineman. And even though uh, maybe the sack numbers weren't there, it certainly felt like the impact was there. And, you know, when he wasn't getting a sack and he wasn't, he wasn't getting a tackle for a loss, it felt like he was probably getting double teamed or, you know, hey, maybe maybe botching a, a, a set along the edge for some reason against Baylor. But no, by and large, uh, a very impressive, very impressive slate of games that I watched. He's a guy that I'm very excited to see where he goes. Like I said, I want him at six in Detroit. I think every fan base should want a guy like Tyree Wilson because, you know, again, the motor, the, the traits that he brings. And I know some people are like, oh, who cares about the traits, right? It's about the production. Well, the production was dang good too, right? We're not going to undersell seven sacks and 60 tackles, right? Um, so yeah, just very impressive across the board. He's my number one slash two player, right? We're going to leave it at that because, uh, yeah, if I was a GM, I think there might be some current concerns with Jalen in that regard. So um, I don't think there's a spot you can take him that's too high. Right? I just think it it then becomes a question of where can you get him otherwise? <laughs> you know, how much value can you get for him? Where you get him? If you get him at three, that's great. If you get him at six, that's even better. I've seen some people say, oh, Atlanta at eight. Oh, that would be that might be the steal of the draft. And it's not it's not common that the steal of the draft happens in the top ten. That very well might be it. So 
a very fun player to watch. I recommend you put on some film if, if this wasn't enough for you already. Just a, a great player uh, in so many facets of the game, against the run, against the pass. He can do it all, and I'll be excited to see just what he does at the next level. So with that being said, if you want to see what I do next, what prospect I have to talk about, uh, not that, all these videos are coming up pretty much the same day, so I think you guys get it. Uh, but if you if you want to check out the next one, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. So that way you are always in the know with my future uploads. So for today, I'm mic'd up, now I'm mic'ing out. Peace, guys. I'll see you next time.